A new UN report is warning that the world is on track for a temperature increase of more than three degrees Celsius by the end of this century. That's after global greenhouse gas emissions rose to a record high last year. The UN's Environment Agency said that even if countries were to follow through on their existing pledges, temperatures would still rise by a catastrophic 2.6 degrees. Nations are gathering at Azerbaijan next month to work out new climate targets. We can speak now to Rachel Cletus, Policy Director of Climate and Energy Program at the Union of Concerned Scientists. Uh, welcome to you. Now, we are seeing that the world is on track for a rise of more than three degrees of warming this century. Firstly, just a simple question, why? It's really alarming to see the results of this report. Why? Simply because we continue to burn fossil fuels. Instead of making the clean energy transition and rapidly cutting heat trapping emissions, we're continuing to uh, pump out uh, more and more global warming emissions. Uh, we are causing catastrophic changes. Uh, this is taking a deadly, costly toll on people all over the world with floods, wildfires, heat waves, uh, droughts. Uh, it's really, really a dangerous signal that we're sending. You've just hinted at it there, but if the projections are correct, just tell us in, in practical terms, what will the world be like to live in then? Well, I want to start by saying we're at about 1.2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels and we're already seeing catastrophic changes. In many cases, we're starting to see some irreversible changes also getting tipped off. Um, so it's not like 1.5 is a knife edge. In fact, it's a continuum and the impacts are accelerating. Uh, this is not a smooth increase. And if this is what we're seeing at 1.2, as we cross 1.5 and go up to 3, it is unimaginable. The kind of extreme heat that we will see at that point, it's just not going to be healthy for the human body in many places in the world. We're going to see loss of precious ecosystems, uh, die back of the Amazon forest. We're going to see sea level rise accelerate with so many people living on coastlines around the world. So much of our infrastructure and economy located on coastlines around the world. That will be catastrophic. But we do have a choice, and that's what this report is strongly pointing out. Our policy choices really matter. World leaders need to step up right now. Let's talk a bit more about policy because there's a, there's a key climate meeting happening in Azerbaijan next month. Is there any uh, reason to hope that, that something uh, concrete and positive will come out of these talks? Well, there are two really crucial things we want to see. One, of course, countries need to raise the ambition of their emissions reduction commitments. Right now, we're far off track from where we need to be. But the other key piece is for the whole world to make this clean energy transition, richer nations really need to provide climate finance to help lower income countries also cut their emissions and cope with the kind of catastrophic climate impacts we've already baked in. Climate finance is a burning issue at COP in Azerbaijan. Wealthy nations have fallen short on their responsibility for a long time now, and it's time to step up. We need funding on the order of about a trillion dollars galvanized all around the world with uh, richer countries leading so that we can accelerate this clean energy transition everywhere and that the world can be better off for it. Rachel, thank you very much for that. Uh, that's Rachel Cletus, the Policy Director with the Climate and Energy Program at the Union of Concerned Scientists. Thank you.